3,000 asylum seekers. Hello and welcome. Now the question is, are Ghanaian birds safe to eat? Uh, we recently saw uh, Hannah Bisu eating uh, a chicken on TV to prove that, yes, it's uh, perfectly safe for us to eat our own chickens. And why has it been? Because bird flu has visited us. And indeed, I must say, it has been well contained. Uh, the some birds were destroyed in Tema. Indeed, lots and lots of birds were destroyed. And we were asked not to move birds across regions. And we haven't had the, the case as much as we did. But going forward, the poultry industry has always been that sector that is suffering. A potential sector that could have employed so many people but can't do it. A potential that could have competed with all chickens, you know, worldwide, but they can't do it. Indeed, we prefer the homegrown chickens, but sometimes they're just way too expensive. And what the farmers are saying is that if we can buy our local uh, maize from here, uh, then it makes everything cheaper. But if we have to import maize and, uh, and soya, then it becomes expensive because 80% of the cost is in the feeding. So if the feeding goes up, they are unable to compete. What are we going to do going forward? Indeed, our city is all over the place because we are importing practically everything. Are we going to grow our own maize and grow our own chickens? My name is Nanan Sakwao, and this is PM Express. Well, thank you very much for staying and apologize for the, uh, the uh, extra long uh, commercials. But hey, we are back to find out if Ghanaian chicken is safe to eat. And who better than endorse it uh, than Dr. Louisa Hanabisu, Deputy Minister of Food and Agriculture. Uh, Hannah, you're welcome. Thank you. And uh, congratulations and long time no see. You see. You see. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, are we safe? Are we out of the uh, bird flu era? Well, I'll not say we're out, but yes, we are safe. We can go out there and comfortably buy a chicken and eat it? Comfortably, and the safest chicken to eat right now is a Ghanaian chicken. Ah, well, the, the, what, have, we, have we discovered where this bird flu came from? Because once upon a time, we're all free, and then all of a sudden, let's take some blood to Italy, comes back and they said, hey, you and the irony of it is that it came at a time when um, the president had instructed the ministry to you know, put the right policies in place to revamp the poultry industry, and which we started. And um, somehow the bird flu came into the country. Right now we are doing the studies. We are with um, the British... Um, we are with the British, they, we are sending them some information, they need certain things from us. And they have a certain studies that they can do, then they will be able to tell us where the actual source is. Because what we want to do is not just to, you know, control, eradicate it and just say, okay, we are free of it. We want to know the source so that we'll be able to, you know, seal any, you know, loophole that we may have in the system. The, uh, the other thing was the uh, rest restrictions in movement. Yeah. Uh, what I found strange was even feed. They were not allowed to move feed, yeah. of course. So you're wondering, you know, uh, is there feed production in every region or do some regions depend on other ones to move feed, of course? We, we have uh, actually um, feed production in almost every region. and. The practice here in Ghana is a lot of the bigger farmers, they have some sort of mini, you know, feed mills that they do their own production. But of course, um, sometimes they need the inputs, the feed ingredients and other stuff to add to it, to give it a quality, uh, you know, nutritional quality that they need. And so, um, yes, you know, there may be some that you may depend on, that some farmers today don't have, and so maybe they may have um, a company that they depend on, mm -hmm. you know, for feed. Some companies to the Inakra, they have um, other outlets in other regions and other districts, so they just supply and then it's retail. 
um, the reason why we are saying feed, you know, um, should not move from Greater Accra to any other region without a veterinary health certificate and a movement permit is that feed is, is a highly potential source of, you know, um, if you want to put it, contamination. Mm -hmm. And is the easiest one that you can share among so many farms at a go. Um, I can choose to come to your farm to get, you know, deal with chicks or something, or I can choose not to come. And it will be just with one farmer. Now, if you were a feed miller and you have thousands of tons of feed, at that particular time, you're going to um, supply tens of farms. So with a contaminated feed at a go, you drive from Great Accra, you get to Kumase, and you let go. Mm. And so we're going to have a disaster on our hands. There was a feed mill here in Accra that, um, I mean, we don't want to be putting the name out there because uh, we also have to protect businesses. It doesn't mean that, you know, that feed is going to go out, but you don't want to, you know, do that. We feel that, you know, uh, farmers and feed millers should also, their names should be protected. The most important thing is how to resolve the problem. That the feed is contaminated with the, with the virus. And so if we had not moved in, and these, these, you know, sacks, thousands of sacks were distributed to various farms. As we speak, we would have had a disaster on our hands. Then it would have been very difficult to even trace it to the feed. Okay, and so what we are saying is that anytime you enter into a processing plant, any form of processing, especially food, I will talk about food yeah. because of where I am. Yeah. You enter into a poultry processing plant, if you are going for a visit, the right point of entry, first point of entry, should be from the clean area to the dirty area. So by the time you enter, you are entering into the packaging, you enter into this, you go into the slaughterhouse, and you move from there, you get to where they will actually be offloading the birds, you know, into the machine for it to go in for slaughter. The simple thing is that from the clean area, you're not going to take any contaminated product to the dirty area. Mm -hmm. And so when you have outbreaks, the movements should be from the non-affected to the affected. But you cannot just let go and say, okay, it, it can just go. Why we are saying um, um, you should have the permit and the health certificate is this. Some people import feed ingredients into the country. <coughs> So now, before we will give you, government will give you waiver, or the ministry will give you waiver, you need to present the health certificate, the Ghanaian veterinary health certificate, and the movement permit attached to it before we sign your waiver for you. And we've met with the security agencies, all the security agencies in the country. We've discussed in depth what, you know, the disease is all about and what the ministry is doing so we we are in collaboration with them and so if your truck is found at any barrier without these two documents we've told the importers or the millers or whatever it could be deal checks anything that has to do with poultry it will be seized and the things will be destroyed it's non-negotiable we're not gonna go there and try it because it's hassle-free for you to get it tested and hassle-free for you to get the two certificates. And so if you are sure that your product is clean, you have no reason running away from the checks. Mm. And so if you get to a barrier without those documents, then it means that you have doubt as to whether your product is clean or not. Mm -hmm. We are not at that point going to do the checks. We will We'll go ahead and destroy it because if we allow any contaminated product to get into the unaffected regions, we are going to continue to spread the disease. We are going to, you know, um, kill the industry. It's going to increase the cost for government and it's going to be very difficult now to bring the whole thing under control. We are lucky it's only in Greater Accra. It's spreading in Greater Accra 
but we've been able to put it under control for the past two weeks we've not had incidents yet so these measures are going to be in place until the end of September. No, no other region has reported? No, you know when it came somewhere in June mm -hmm. we had um, two outbreaks in Obuase but these two farms belong to one person and so it tells you that wherever the sources which we are still investigating because we are told that he brought in birds from Burkina Faso and Burkina Faso had bird flu. Okay. We are yet to find out. Mm -hmm. You cannot, yeah. you know, so conclude. Um, when we went and, you know, um, depopulated the farm and did all the disinfection and everything up to date, we've not had a single case, even in Mbwasa, the Volta region. We had three outbreaks in two districts. I think it's Ketu South and um, Keta, mm -hmm. two, two districts, three outbreaks, that's in three different farms, just around that same time. I think Volta region even came before Obuasi. Ever since, we've not had a single case, even in these two districts, so let the alone in Faso. So it, it's worked. Where we have issue now is Greater Accra. All the other regions have not had issues, not even with our border towns. So where we have is Greater Accra, which keeps spreading. Out of 14 districts, we have nine districts affected. So it should tell you that there's something really happening in Greater Accra that must be taken care of. We find the, the, the virus on the market, especially from you know, backyard farms. Mm. And some farms, you know, some of the commercial farms who have been affected. So we are now obliged to then restrict movements even within Greater Accra with the zoning. And we've said that we don't want hawking of birds. We've asked farmers, you know, and the vets, you know the numbers, you call them, they come and check, your farm is satisfied, then you can do on-farm slaughtering, dress, and then people can actually come in and then purchase the product, which is safe. I mean, uh, how, how is it then passed from bed to, to humans? Okay. Um, you get the flu, I mean the virus, it passes from birds to human, we know, through direct contact with some of the secretion or the aerosol, things through the air. And usually it's not we those who consume, but those who get the flu itself, the human beings, that is those who work on the farms. That's why we're saying that we have a peculiar you know, situation as a country where we have backyard. I used to say that every Ghanaian with a backyard is a potential poultry farmer. Yeah, I, have, I have five chickens. Yeah, you, you <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and they can, <laughs> yeah, no, and they can also get, it's not, it's not, it's not just about a poultry farm, mm. any bread. I have exotic beds in my home. I love them. And I used to feed, you know, the, the, <laughs> you know, the roaming ones. I would just put food and water and every day they would drop in my house and eat. Mm. But from the time the flu came, I stopped because I don't want any strange beds coming into my home. Mm. So when you live in a house and you have a backyard um, poultry farm and you get a flu, I mean the beds get a flu and you decide not to inform the authorities. This is what is going to happen. The virus is going to continue to be in your home. You are going to continue living with the virus. You can't bring in any bread. You have children, you have people of old age, and with all the little particles that go you know, in the air, sometimes you breathe them. Mm. The possibility of somebody getting it in your house is there. You need a certain period of exposure, a long exposure with the animal the sick bed or the contaminated product for you to also get the disease. The other side of the, of the virus is that it mutates. What even entered into Ghana in May, as we speak, it has mutated because it's become more virulent. It's now more aggressive than it entered. And so we are studying the characteristics, the genes and everything to see the DNA, to see what it is, which, which trend, which, which type. So is, that's it, is it fatal to humans? Or? Oh, yeah. That, I mean, uh, statistically, you realize that about 59% of people worldwide who got it died. Oh, and and it's, it's because, you know, it's so similar to a normal flu. 
Okay, so we are used to just getting the normal, you know, over the counter, you know, medications and you rest. But by the time you realize that it's not a normal flu, then what happens is that pneumonia has certain complications, have certain, and then it's too difficult to get rid of it. And it's virus, you know. How, how would I know if my five chickens, any of them has got bed flu? I mean, you know, you, yeah, you know what I've been saying? I'm saying that I don't think that we even as lay people, we have to even try hard to know whether the bread, okay, whether, you know, there's some discharge from the nose, you know. The flu gives, you know, they, they have joint pains, the temperature is very high. What we experience, the birds they do experience. But unfortunately, the bread will not be able to tell you that, you know, I have fever, I have joint pains. It will only go and quell. So you know your animals. You know the way they behave. So when you get up in the morning and realize that your chicken or your bread is not behaving the normal way it should, I say call the vet. We had the meeting the other day and I told the vets, when you go out there, tell the farmers, the lay people, that if even they see their bed limping, they should call the vet. We are in, in, in a special period where we have an outbreak. So you can't go there telling the people that, okay, look out for this, look out for that, look out for that. Definitely, if I'm a farmer, I will not see what you're talking about, if mm -hmm. even I see it. So what we are saying is that, okay, if you see any strange behavior in your bread, just alert the vet. We're also saying that government, by the grace of God, has approved monies for us for compensation. Mm -hmm. And so once you come and we come in, if it's, if it's a bad flu, we will depopulate and we'll disinfect the place and clear your area, you know, from the virus. So if we, we um, killed, in other words, I mean, killed, C-U-L-L-E-D, <laughs> we don't want to use that kill because it's not too palatable. Mm -hmm. We don't want to also use slaughter because we don't slaughter. We, 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 we depopulate. Mm. So if we depopulated, let's say, 10 birds, if you only had 2,000 birds and we made 10 birds, you'll be compensated for only 10 birds. So that's why we are saying that um, when you have the problem, come forward. Because the, bird, the virus is in the system. It's not going to go away. It can only get worse if we do nothing about it. But God is on our side. We've been able, it's, it's, it's not gone beyond other borders. That's why we are saying that, yes, from the other regions, things can come into greater right. So how many have we yeah. depopulated so far, and how many farmers have been affected? The, we have, for we ourselves, we've depopulated about 40,000. That's something on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then those that had already died is in the 23 thousand I'll get the figures for you so when you put them together we are getting close to about a hundred thousand birds okay and then quite a good number of crates egg crates and then um, some sacks of feed mm -hmm. of course some wooden structures we've had to burn them and of course the feed mill that we're also going to have to destroy all the feed that you know we have in the feed mill I mean, uh, Hannah, the, the, the way we cook our chickens, I mean, we'll, we'll, I mean how the bird flu survive in, uh, you know, the way we cook and steam and ginger it and fry it and grill it, it. Uh, at, at that time the, the, the flu would be dead or it could still be in there? It's not too strong in front of, you know, uh, heat, actually. The way we cook our food, there's no way <laughs> <laughs> that flu will survive anyhow. I, I love Ghanaian chicken, and I'm saying that we have the flu now in the USA, it came in the Netherlands, UK, Germany, and other countries, where, I think even South Africa, okay, where we import chicken from. My very simple example that I always give is this. We have videos of the way chicken is injected, the meat is injected with something, then it bloats, is packaged and exported. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then there was even an issue, you know, with the um, chickens that were coming, the meat that were coming from um, the USA, where it was found by the FDA because of a certain type of drug that is used in the feed that makes the meat to look shiny and more rosy, you know, appetizing. Mm -hmm. the, the byproduct 
That did not leave the meat, but it stayed with the meat. It was arsenic acid. Arsenic acid is carcinogen. It means that it causes cancer. And we consume it, and say 70% of what was exported to Africa contained that. They were not consuming it, but it was being exported to us. Wow. And so, as far as some of us are concerned, the safest meat, chicken product, even beef, because there are places where we have growth promoters. Growth promoters, the levels that stay in the meat at the end of the day causes cancer when you consume them. And so the safest one for us is the Ghanaian one. The one that is on the farm, you are sure that it's been checked, you are sure that the bread is not sick, and you can safely consume it. It's very tasty. I spoke to a couple of farmers before you came. Uh, funny, they all had a good word to say about you. You know, I thought they were going to give me really, you know, ammunition to fight you when you came, but they all had nothing but praises for you. So wow. congratulations. Thank you. Uh, the, the only thing they said was that uh, there was one particular farm who had a lot of birds depopulated. And he said he'd strained his staff and he's still hanging on to the staff and hasn't got any means of paying them. So he keeps borrowing money, hoping that the conversation could come quick so he can start business again. And one or two people also said, you know, uh, just waiting for the conversation so they can go. That's their main source of livelihood. Okay. Um, the issue with the compensation is that we can't just go ahead and start paying without auditing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can go to work and say I came to your farm and depopulated 100 birds and destroyed 1,000 crates of eggs, 200 bags of feed, and what have you. Maybe what I depopulated was just about 50. I'm not saying that is what sure. our officers are sure. doing, but everything must be checked. And so the monies were approved just about the time that Parliament was rising. As we speak, government has delivered you know, six vehicles and um, 20 motorbikes. We requested for 10, one for each region. We've had six. For now, we requested for 60 motorbikes. We have 20. And we are going to, you know, embolse them very nicely. That to show that this is for a bed flu control. We will now move on. Then we will get all the auditors and financial brains behind the table. Is it going to drag on? It's not going to drag on. It's not going to drag on. Once we have the monies approved, it's not going to drag on. No, not at all. So we'll be looking at it. I know that the first farmer that we depopulated his farm, not too sure, but I think it was a big farm. I'm mm -hmm. not too sure of the numbers. Um, 35,000. Yeah, exactly. think that. And I know, yeah, we know what it is. <laughs> but the thing is, um, these farms cannot also be operational until about six months, unless we, you know, check. Mm -hmm. We have to now gradually introduce birds, wait for the incubation period, you have to take them to the lab and check to make sure that the whole place is clean before you can allow them in. But we will start working on the compensation for I'm them. I'm assuming they depopulated my five, my five chickens in my, in my front yard. I mean, how, how much do I get? <laughs> I'll not be able to tell the <laughs> figures. I mean, but I'm sure, quite, quite I'm sure with the five chickens you sacrifice and say, okay, you just give that money to some other <laughs> to, farmer. To, to God and country, yeah? Thank you. <laughs> Now, after bird flu, there are still challenges within this industry. Now, this industry is a great potential for uh, income, adding to the GDP, adding to nutrition, employment. I mean, it's a very sensitive sector, which, like you said, you're good in putting uh, new policies in place to uh, revive it. Uh, I think we've done a great disservice to it. Uh, after bird flu, what's the way forward for poultry? I think that the poultry industry has taken off, and we are very grateful to His Excellency for that. Uh, I'm looking for the right adjective for that decision. I would say it was bold, and he mandated us to do it. It's taken off. But um, I always say it, I liken it to somebody who has been in a state of coma for years. The person comes out of coma, and you don't expect the person to start running or start, you know, remembering or coming up to date, which you, which you have to go through some sort of, you know, rehab. 
So that is what is happening. Right now, we have business people who are now putting in investment. So I'm not even saying after the bird flu. I'm very confident that the bird flu is not going to go beyond Greater Agra. To where we are now, for me, we've come to the peak of it. And we are going to tackle it with everything we got. That's why we put all these measures in place. And it's non-compromising. It's non-negotiable. None of those measures. And so we just want to make sure that people's investments are protected. You go to, is it Apedra? I don't want to. Mm, <laughs> it's on the Kumasi Road. Okay, there's a big investment that is coming up. Huh? Equipments are coming, it's poultry. Okay, it's processing plant, feed mill, poultry, everything. Go to Bronga Hafa region. I think the biggest processing plant is going to come to Bukukua and uh, Driankwanta on the main Kumasi Sunyan Road. The whole reason is that it should be able to serve Bunga Half region. From um, Tabri up the Ashanti region, we should be able to transport our bears there. Our three northern regions should be able to come down to, to that place. It's a strategic positioning so that everybody would, you know, um, will also get an advantage from it. But it's not government, it's a purely private sector investment. He says that government has created the environment, he's taking advantage of it. And he's a Ghanaian. Mm. And the chief, the Dwayne Kwantahene, which we, we, um, uh, it's a Boachitrum, the second, I think so, the third. He, we are grateful to him because he gave out over 100 acres to the investor. We have some other person, I think Mr. Dusa, who's also trying to put up another processing plant and a feed mill here. Drian Kwanta one will come up with feed mill with hatchery and what have you. It, it should tell you that people like gearing up for it. Some importers have started the acquisition of land and other properties to invest now in the pottery industry in the country. You see, we've all realized that the best way to make it is to invest in the country in poultry. Mm -hmm. And every country makes millions of dollars from the poultry industry. I'll not mention the name of the country, but when we started this regulation, we, we started applying and enforcing the laws as far as imports are concerned. From January to July, an embassy wrote to us and said that they lost 12 million US dollars, 12 million and a little bit US dollars in seven months of poultry exports to Ghana alone. That's and so they needed an explanation. It should tell you how much we would have sent out in terms of employment, what we would have exported out of our country, okay, to this country. That's about 12 million US dollars. I said you count your losses, I count my gains. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it's, for, for, for me, the poultry industry is taking off. The farmers, you see, we have the install capacity. All that they needed was some sort of a friendly environment that was good and favorable to them, for them. We are, very, we are very sure that very soon, if farmers should start producing and gauging the 1.5 kilos, it means that when you start producing, let's say about maximum 30 days, you should be able to slaughter black free, I mean, package black freeze and store, okay? You shouldn't wait to get the market before you slaughter, so you clear your farm, it's all in or out. You, they go in, they go out, then you store. We are very confident that the machine coming to um, the Bronga Half region is a 40,000 beds a day in one shift. If they are doing two shifts, it's 80,000 beds a day. So if they should work 26 days in a month, you can calculate 80,000 or 40,000 by 26. It should tell you the number of beds that would be needed to feed that plant mm -hmm. sufficiently for a month. It tells you that. Um, people in maize production, people in soya production, people in the feed mill industry, people in transport industry. And people in the coastal industry. The coastal. Build, build a coastal right next to it so that. Trust me. Come and free, trust me. I'm that. positioning myself you to grow up. You see, so <laughs> I think that we should all do. So for me, it's the industry is going to survive. It's going to go up. And one day, one day, I've always been saying that. Um, I'm sure that it will be a legacy that His Excellency will leave behind. 
Let me take All a break right. here, and then when I come back, we'll look at this legacy because there are still other aspects to poetry, and are we looking at all those aspects? Still move, we're coming back. Thank you very much for staying, and we are talking about chicks, birds, and are they safe to eat? We're talking about Ghanaian chicken. And yes, indeed, it's safe to eat, the safest to eat, and uh, we should patronize it. Uh, there is an inset, and let's watch it, and then we'll take it from there. A total of 40,154 birds have been killed since the ministry confirmed the outbreak of bird flu two months ago. Another 23,987 birds have died naturally from the disease. The cases have so far been concentrated in the Greater Accra, Volta and the Ashanti regions, with 9 out of the 14 districts in Accra recording cases. The Ministry of Agriculture had earlier prohibited hawking of live birds in the capital, a ban which was casually overlooked by most poultry retailers. It however says the latest ban on the movement of birds, poultry products and feed in and out of Accra should help reduce the spread. We are strictly, strictly, strictly banning every form of poultry and poultry product out of Accra into any other region. The first outbreak that we had in the Ashantri in Obuasi, we've not had any other outbreak ever since. So we will cautiously say that Ashanti region is safe. The other regions, we cautiously say that they are safe. Unfortunately, we will not be able to enter into people's homes to see who has backyard um, poultry or not. Unfortunately, these backyard poultry, they find themselves with the flu on our markets. What we found on Cantamanto Market was backyard. And we did not know how many of those birds had been sent out on the streets. And so we are zoning, and as we go down, we will let you know the zones and the measures that are being taken. We need to take these measures to make sure that in the next... Thank you very much for staying. And uh, just before the break, uh, we're looking at the other aspect of it. And I was talking about this, the, the feeding cost. Uh, all the farmers I spoke to says, no, no, even if we don't have subsidies, but we can afford to buy the feed, we can compete with wherever and whoever's chicken. But it looks as if there isn't an intensive revolution to grow maize and soya, and therefore it's affecting business. Is there anything on that side to make sure we balance the equations or they are left to the fate of if there's going to be maize or not? Well, I think that um, it's something that is being worked on to see how best farmers can be encouraged to go into maize production. What is happening is that if we have a, a bumper harvest this year, you can look for a lean season next year because, because it comes you know, in their great numbers. Then the next season, everybody will turn to a different thing. And so if farmers know that, okay, we have a stable price, this is the way it's going to go, and wait, uh, you know, you have your fertilizer subsidies, you have your other products, then you can go into maize and you can rotate with soya. Some people can just do soya, okay? But we do not, like as a country, farm so much in soya and in maize. Is, is it not because, you know, uh, there isn't that guaranteed buyer. The bulk buying people can only buy, I think, 35 tons. And collectively, we, we sow, I think, about 400 tons. So there are so many farmers left with maize. Yeah, I, I, you know, that, that has been it. So it's like, OK, instead of going into maize, then I go into tomato. And it's also because of, uh, of the system that we use. So per an acre, we have so little. So farmers put in so much when it comes to maize, and they basically harvest nothing. Mm -hmm. And so they think that, okay, it's better doing some other thing else than going into maize. I think that if we should do our spacing well, take, you know, um, make good use of the land, 
Okay, I, I'm, I'm farming maize at my constituency, and I'm doing 25 by 75. 25 from one to the other, and then the lines is 75 centimeters. Because the land is not big, and I want to use it, maximize the use of the land. These are things that are being thought you know, to the farmers. And I think that when we're able to do that, then we can now have a lot. When you put in, you can also harvest a lot. Because, because without that, whatever policy you put in place won't succeed. Without a fee, definitely it's going to be difficult. But that is not just it, OK? Government has also done this. That when you bring in maize, you bring in any other thing to feed the livestock industry. We waive the taxes for you. We, are giving, we give you letters so you don't pay the taxes. And it's not because government is happy saying that, okay, because you're important, I'm doing this for you. No. Government is saying that I'm paying on behalf of the Ghanaian farmer. What is happening here is that that payment that we do, indirect payment for the farmer, should be passed on. Should be passed on, but it doesn't happen. Importers go and they sell this fee to them as though nothing was waived for them. Then some of them also, even the product that comes into the country, is exported outside the country. So it means that what was meant for the Ghanaian farmer, you take advantage of it, you don't pay the revenue, and you don't pay the taxes, then you take the product out of the country. Well, because of time, let me move to the 60-40 uh, policy, where uh, the local farmer has to at least meet 40% 50, 50%, of local demand, which the tabulate to about 57 million birds a year and then 60 percent we can import but apparently we are struggling to even meet that 40 percent uh, so what, what are we going to do reduce the quota or try and meet that 40 percent we are not going to reduce the quota and we are not saying okay the farmer you should meet what we are saying is that if you want to bring 100 metric tons into the country you can only bring 60 metric tons but before we allow you the 60 go and purchase the 40 metric tons from the Ghanaian farmer. At that point, you'll be able to get it. And you see, it takes 90 days for your permit to expire. And it takes 30 days, 35 days. Let me maximize it and say 40 days for me to, you know, um, run my best from day one to slaughter. And so if I want to produce for you, I'll produce for you and I'll package it for you. So we are not shifting away at all from that. That 40% belongs to the Ghanaian market, the Ghanaian farmer, the Ghanaian um, processor. So we are saying that our farmers, they should raise themselves, the business people should raise themselves, and then let's take it up. So we, every country where we import from, they started like us. And so we are not shifting away at all from that, not at all. And as I said, we just started 2014. And so people should not expect that everything will be rosy for us. Definitely we are going to hit the rocks what and we're going to move forward. What happened to Kudo I mean, I grew up in South Odoko and there was a Kukufoto and you went there and it was listing a chicken world on its own. No, I'm, I'm, sure that they, I'm sure that these things will come back. You see, when Ghanaians start to appreciate that what we eat from outside contains so many things that endangers our health and the very life that we have. We will resort to what we have in our country. We appreciate it more. You know that you are eating something that is very organic. We are not mixing all these medications to swell the bread or make it look all good. At the end of the day, you are going to consume something that is going to give you cancer. And so we should look at all these things and then say, you know what? I'm going to create jobs or employment for a Ghanaian. I'm going to stop the exportation of jobs to other countries. And the irony of it is after I export, then our own children will queue in embassies looking for visas to go and look for the very jobs that we created in those countries for them. And because of time, let me get these numbers that you need to put out there. Thank you. <laughs> the numbers that we need to put out there, um, I'll just give the regions. I okay. think later I'll give you the, the districts in Greater Accra, and maybe when you have time, so you can help under. us and do that. So for Greater Accra region, um, if you have... Um, any issues with your birds, you call 0244-847827. 0244-847827. Central region, we have 
0241-432-6001. And then we also have 0249-117814. Northern region, we have 024-317-9530. Volta region, we have 0244-673820. Brong Ahafo region, we have 0244-778927. Western region, we have 020-8378391. Upper West, we have 054-244444. Upper East, 020-937-33523. Ashanti Region, 0244-955-999997. Eastern Region, 024412-8877. These are the, the numbers for the various regions. And as you call them, you'll be directed to the right place that you should report the case to. So in case your beds are acting any funny, limping, feeling cold, not getting up in the morning, whatever that's not unusual, give these numbers a call. Well, Hannah, thank you very much. And you much. can give me one of your chickens. Yeah, one of my five chickens. I'll cook right? and eat and see. see. <laughs> they, are very fat. they are very, very fat. Uh, Dr. Louisa Hanabishi, Deputy Minister for Food and Agriculture, and also Honorable Member of Parliament for Thanos. Oh, yes, Thanos. Let me greet my people. You see now, they're, they're watching. <laughs> we, we don't, we, we, the English, we don't like it. On Thursdays, uh, Joy FM 99.7 FM, or my Joy Online, those of you who follow me on my program, that's my opinion. Tomorrow I'm talking about religion in an uninformed world. Very interesting story, religion in an uninformed world. So tune in at 2, between 2 and 3, and listen to the pitch. And by all means, you can call in and agree with me or disagree, but you know what, it's always going to be my opinion. Thank you very much for watching, and tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. Thank you, Anana. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nana. For <laughs> I hope that it's not going to be after two years again. <laughs> no. <laughs>